Hello and welcome to the calculator guide video on two ways to find speed when acceleration equals zero. We're going to look at using both the derivative feature with solve to answer this question as well as using the polynomial function in the equation function mode on the calculator. Now I'm doing this on a Casio FX991EX although you be able to use these techniques with any calculator that has a solver, a polynomial solver and a derivative function available. Let's take a look at the question. A particle moves in a straight line so that at time t seconds, its velocity is v meters per second. Where, and then we've got the equation there, v equals one half, then we've got a set of brackets, parentheses, five t squared minus 20 t plus three. And then we've got to find the speed of the particle when the acceleration is zero. We'll have a look at the difference between velocity and speed for this particular example at the very end when we've got the answer. So let's have a look at the first way, which is using the derivative feature and solve in the calculate mode on the class with. So we're just in calculate now. We need to activate the derivative features, so that shift and then this button here. You can see we've got to d by dx and set of brackets open. And now you have to be careful how you input this. We're gonna start off with one half, and then you want a second set of brackets inside to contain the quadratic that we've got there. Five, now we need to use x rather than t as the calculator will solve for x. So it's five x squared minus 20x plus three. And then be very careful here, you just need to close off those brackets to ensure that we get a half of uh, the function that we've got within there. So if you navigate right then, and then we've got x equals, well we don't know what x is, or t rather. In fact, we need to solve for that. So we're just going to have x equals x here preparing the calculator to solve and then navigate right so you're back on the main line there and we want equals so alpha and calc what we're looking for here is that we should know that the derivative of the velocity dv by dt is equal to the acceleration when we have these variable acceleration type questions so we know what we've inputted in here is essentially going to be the acceleration the derivative of the velocity so we want this to be equal to zero to answer our question. So we've got equals zero here. So once we've got that in, we're ready to solve. So it's shift and solve, and you'll just have your previous value or your default value of X here. So just ignore that, just press equals and it will solve for X given as a new value. And here we've got X equals two, which means T equals two. So our time is two seconds when the acceleration of the particle equals zero. Now what we're going to do is to put that two seconds back into the velocity equation to be able to calculate what velocity and therefore what speed the particle is moving at. But it's very easy to do that as we've already got the function written in there. All we need to do is to delete off the bits we don't need. So if you press left on the arrow keys and just delete off the equals zero bit, and you can either scroll left, although depending on how long your function is, that might be the more lengthy option. It might be easier just to go right here and go to the beginning of the operation and navigate to just after the bracket that was opened up after d by dx and then press delete. And you can see here, all we've got is the velocity function there and the x that the calculator will use will be the x that it's just found which was the two seconds that we needed. So this, this is exactly what we want. So if you press equals, and then we'll just have SD to get that as a decimal, then we've got a value here of minus 8.5, which means the velocity of the particle when the acceleration equals zero is negative 8.5. Now it said here in the question that it wants to find the speed of the particle. The direction currently is negative or moving in the negative direction. So all we need to do is to take the absolute value of that. So we're just taking the value 8.5 and that's going to be our speed 8.5 meters per second. Okay, let's have a look at the second way, which is using the equation function feature. So we need to go to the menu and then we need to navigate down on the ClassWiz FX991EX to option A, which is equation function or wherever your polynomial solver is located. We want two polynomial and we've got T squared. So therefore we've got X squared which means we want two here. Now the slight disadvantage with this method is that you do need to multiply 
out your bracket here. So we want a half times all of the coefficients that are involved. So it's five times a half, five over two, minus 20 over two, that's minus 10, plus three over two. And press equals when we're done. Now we're not going to make use of the solutions here. So ignore X1 and X2, and we want to focus on in this case, the minimum value, so the turning point. At the turning point, the gradient of the slope will be zero, which means that's the point we're looking at where the derivative is equal to zero, hence the acceleration is equal to zero. So these, this is gonna be exactly relevant to what we're looking for here. So you notice how the X here is two, that's our two seconds from before, and if we press equals again, then we get here our value for Y, uh, which is the velocity. So we'd see that minus 8.5 is back again. Remember, if we were after the speed, we just want 8.5. So we've just got a reading there for our velocity at the minimum point, which is where the derivative equals zero. So we've got our speed directly from that. Be very careful as to how the question is phrased, particularly if you're in a test or an exam situation. Here we've got find the speed of the particle when the acceleration is zero. We have found it by using the calculator, so therefore we've legitimately done that. If you have as part of the question things like you must show you're working or, or you must use calculus to show that, then obviously you need to do a full method. Nothing wrong with uh, doing this as a check or doing this first to get the answer and then working your way towards it. But just be careful how the question's phrased to ensure that you get all the marks that you deserve for this particular question. Don't forget to like and subscribe for future videos, but that's it for this video. Thank you very much again for watching and I will see you next time on The Calculator Guide.